Thank you so much, Sarah. Your commencement speaker today is the 22nd governor of the state of Washington, Chris Gregoire. She was raised in Auburn by her mother, who worked as a short order cook to support the family. After graduating from Auburn High School and the University of Washington, she received her law degree from Gonzaga University and embarked on a long and distinguished career in public service. In 1982, she was named the state's first female deputy attorney general, and in 1988, she became the head of the State Department of Ecology. Later, during three years, uh, three terms as attorney general, she achieved national recognition for leading a multi-state lawsuit against the tobacco industry, winning the state a settlement of nearly $4.5 billion. In both of her terms, as the state's top elected official, Governor Gregoire has addressed historic budget shortfalls while leading efforts to expand health care coverage to low-income children, increase enrollments at the state's colleges and universities, and protect vital services for the state's most vulnerable individuals and families. Her next Washington plan has produced strategies and initiatives to encourage business development and growth, helping lead to the creation of more than 200,000 jobs in the state of Washington since she took office in 2005. And along the way, she and her husband, Mike, have raised two daughters, now grown. And, and I must interject a note of personal appreciation for this morning's commencement speaker for her commitment to higher education in these challenging times. I believe there has been no more forceful, no more passionate, no stronger advocate for you, your access to quality, and for continuing and protecting the excellence of the diploma that you are about to receive. From so many of us, thank you, Governor Gregoire. It gives me great pleasure to introduce, introduce your commencement speaker, Governor Chris Gregoire. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, President Shepard, and thank you for your leadership here at Western Washington University. To our trustees, our faculty, our staff, family, and friends, welcome to the great Western Washington University. Congratulations to the 2010 class of, of Western Washington University. You can all be proud of what you've accomplished here. It's a great university and you are great students. Today you join about 100,000 Western alumni who are living, working, and giving around the world. Did you know that uh, last year uh, the University of Washington Medical School accepted a higher percentage of Western grads than they did students from their own university? Who employs more Western grads than anyone else? Boeing and Microsoft. Last year, you contributed 42,000 hours of voluntary service through AmeriCorps. And you're one of the top universities nationally for service in the Peace Corps, with 38 serving across the world and 772 alumni who've been in the program. So thank you for what you stand for. Thank you for being a part of this great university. I am delighted to be here with you today on this day of celebration. It's an honor for me to share with you uh, a day that I think is one of the funnest days in the life of a parent, a family member, and a graduate. So graduates, congratulations to you and to the family and to their mem and the families and friends that are joined here today. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your support that you have provided to this class of 2010. It's a really big day for parents. It marks the graduation of your son or daughter and the start of your own economic recovery. <laughs> Unless, of course, there's graduate school. I've learned that as a graduation speaker, I'm acutely aware that I am standing between you and your graduation party. So I'll do my best so you can get on with it. 
It seems like just a few years that I was graduating from the University of Washington. Um, I don't need to go into how long ago that was, but suffice to say, things were just a tad bit different back then. We didn't have things like cell phones and faxes, PCs, DVDs, CDs, iPods, iPhones, HDTV or MTV. To tweet was to chirp, text was a noun, not a verb, and Google was spelled G-O-O-G-O-L, and it meant the figure one followed by a hundred zeros. Today, that's just the founder's salary. <laughs> Worst of all, there were no remotes, so we actually had to get up off the couch and change the channel of one of three channels that you could have available to you. So you know what? Somehow we survived. Speaking of texting, uh, it was a whole lot easier back then uh, for graduation speakers because today texting allows instant analysis of a speech while it's in progress. So with three or four stabs of the thumb, you can Z for sleeping. DNDC, don't know, don't care. RME, rolling my eyes, or DOS, dozing off soon. <laughs> so with all that in mind, on a much more serious note, today is quite a challenge to talk to a class as distinguished as you when you're graduating at a time when our unemployment rates are at record levels. Political bickering seems to be absolutely everywhere in our country. And there's speculation that America is in decline and that its brightest days are behind us. But today my message is far more optimistic and I think realistic. Take it from someone who's been there. When I graduated, America was deeply divided over racial issues and the Vietnam War. I'm sure you've seen those pictures of people in their bell bottoms and their tie-dye shirts. Well, I'm afraid that was us. Protesters closed down I-5 downtown Seattle. Buildings at the university when I was on campus were being firebombed. Our inner cities were burning. Just months after my graduation, Washington's unemployment rate fell just below where we are today. So I too know something about timing. I graduated with a teaching certificate, just as Washington schools announced that they were gonna hire no new teachers. So I dusted off my high school typing skills and landed my first post-college job, clerk typist. There was deep, deep pessimism about the future of our nation and the future of our region. Reacting to the pessimism, uh, a billboard I remember quite distinctly, distinguishedly um, sprang up just outside of SeaTac and it said, will the last person leaving Seattle turn out the lights? Then as now, optimism was hard to find, and people wondered if a deeply divided America would ever recover. Well, I'm here today to confidently predict that just like back then, those who think that America is in decline have overstated the problems, underestimated our resiliency, and misjudged your potential. There are lots of reasons for me to be optimistic. The goodness of people is the number one reason. I have two daughters about your age, and I couldn't be more confident about the quality and about the potential of this generation. I'd like to focus on something that runs deep in America and bodes a brighter future, and that is our spirit of innovation, our ability to make things better not only for us as individuals, but for our country and for the world. And that's really what Washington State is all about. It is a spirit of innovation. When the doomsayers were riding Seattle off in the early 70s, they didn't foresee a, a little company that was four years off. That company was Microsoft. Today, nearly 40,000 employees in Washington injecting $9 billion into our state economy and producing a powerful magnet for drawing more software and technology companies to our region. When the pessimists were wringing their hands in 71, Starbucks had one store, and that store was in Pike Place Market. Today, they have 15,000 stores in 50 countries. And what about Boeing, which was suffering a devastating downturn in the aerospace industry, was forced to make massive layoffs in the early 70s. Today, that company is flight testing the 787 Dreamliner. It's the next generation of commercial aircraft. Made with new composite materials, that 787 will be 20% more fuel efficient, improve environmental performance, and increase passenger comfort. That's what innovation is all about. 
And when those folks back then were talking about this as the future for them and this state, there were those who were saying it was impossible and they refused to listen to those who said that. Microsoft actually began with two guys who ordered a mail order computer. When they got it, they said, surely we can do better than that. Starbucks was a store for coffee making equipment and for beans until they started selling what was then their free samples for their coffee beans. And it was a young Bill Boeing who went to LA to ride in an airplane at the LA Air Show and he was refused. Upon being refused, he came back to Washington State and said, I'll build my own company. I'll build my own airplanes. So just as new ideas, new businesses, and brilliant new technology blossom, despite the pessimism of the early 70s, there is a new generation of innovation that's taking shape today, and you are a part of it. Consider a company that's developed here in Washington State called In Situ. It started with three employees in a garage in Bingen, Washington. Bingen, by the way, is down on the Columbia River Gorge. Today, in situ, has 500 employees and is the leading provider of drone aircraft. In situ's aircraft measure about six to eight feet span, but they provide powerful eyes in the skies that help our law enforcement, they assist in weather forecasting, they are important tools for coastal patrols and search and rescue in the case of a natural disaster. In fact, when the Somali pirates held the cargo ship captain Richard Phillips hostage in a lifeboat in the Indian Ocean last year, it was an in situ drone that shot visuals to those Navy SEALs that helped free him. In Moses Lake, Washington, $100 million is being spent beginning this month to produce a plant which will provide new carbon fiber, unlike any place in the world, that will produce a new, lighter, much longer distance electrical vehicle, the BMW. And in Anacortes, Washington, core builders used that same product, carbon fiber, for the Space Age 90-foot trimaran, which won the 33rd America's Cup and provided the U.S. its first cup victory since 1992. So it's cars, it's planes, it's boats. We in Washington State are on the cutting edge of technology, providing new materials which will provide for that sustainable future our people need and deserve. That is what innovation is about. Washington has become a hotbed for green jobs where workers are helping increase energy efficiency, produce renewable energy. We weren't producing any wind power here just a few years ago, and we are now the fourth largest producer in the nation. We're building solar power components, and we're making breakthroughs in bioenergy. We have the McKinstry Company, which is leading the globe, located in Seattle, on construction of green buildings and renovating buildings, so they are green. Empire, em, Inland Empire Oil Seeds in Odessa, with a multi-million dollar biofuel plant, and newcomers like blue marble, which is turning algae into fuel. At the Pacific Northwest Laboratory in Richland, we are developing a grid-friendly set of appliances, moving us as a state and nation to a smart grid that, if we were able to develop it today, could result in savings of $70 billion over the next 20 years. So please don't think innovation is all about technology or manufacturing. It's really all about seeing a problem, believing that we can make things better. That's something Western shares with all its students. You've heard from your student speaker, Sarah, dynamite job. She is among many, many generous and thoughtful graduates. Dana Rose Merkel, Sonia Prinz, Portia Landon. Those are three of a group of 20 students who were volunteering in the Dominican Republic last fall when the devastating earthquake hit in Haiti. They were volunteering to paint and refurbish classrooms for refugees. And after the quake, they teamed with German relief agencies packing 5,500 kits with food, water, and supplies. They filled two trucks bound for Port-au-Prince. And I know the students here on campus asked to help in that um, situation with those earthquake victims, stood up and said, we want to help 
We want to help solve this problem. So well done. That is the kind of innovative spirit in solving problems that will make us a better nation and a better world. Innovation is also about original thinking. Consider a young woman, Andrea Peterson, a music teacher at Monte Cristo Elementary in Granite Falls. She last year was named the National Teacher of the Year because she had found a complete new innovative way to educate students. Sure, she had amazing music, and that was a, the heart and soul of what she was doing, but she used the music to help kids learn math, learn English, learn other skills. My personal favorite was when they showed me a rap song about the United States Constitution. Nonprofit organizations are finding new and exciting ways to solve problems, not only here in the U.S., but around the globe. Here's how the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation describes its work. We believe in the power of innovation. By applying new thinking to big problems, we can help people improve their lives. The emphasis is on finding new ways to deliver proven treatments and approaches so that people can have healthier lives around the world. They can be more successful farmers and produce for themselves. They can have safe and secure financial services, and they can get educations that will last for a lifetime. By the way, do you know what the common word is on the website for in situ and gates? It's innovation. Innovation, that's why we here in this state are an incubator for ideas to change the world, ideas to make life better, ideas to make people healthier, ideas like Andrea Peterson's that will help people succeed in their academic performance. The key is for us to maintain that innovative spirit. Larry Page, a co-founder of Google, likes the saying, have a healthy disregard for the impossible. An innovative spirit keeps us moving ahead and helps us avoid being trapped in the status quo in what is the most rapidly changing time in our history. So yes, these are challenging times for you to be graduating, but they are amazingly exciting times for you. Look around at your class of 2010. The spirit of innovation there opens up opportunities for each and every one of you. Someone, someone among you will transform the learning experience for our kids just as Andrea Peterson has done. Someone among us here today, among you in your class, will help develop an energy technology that will produce clean energy and allow us to stop our dependence on foreign oil. Someone among you will have the chance to deliver proven treatments to the needy and third world countries, just as the folks at Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Someone here has a chance to create a device that will make people and safer and more secure around the globe. So to the class of 2010, I say please have a healthy disregard for the impossible. Don't accept the status quo. Always try to make things better. Whatever you do, go out and every day enjoy your life. I believe in you and I believe in our future with you. Thank you and congratulations.